registered on that date. Star date. No messages for you, Commander. Twenty-one eighty-six. Uh, prototypes, I guess. Heavy weapon ammo. Yeah, give it to me. That will come in handy. So that means that our uh, our uh, <laughs> regular date. <laughs> No, that's something I like a lot about the Star Trek. When they they say that. Uh, it's very funny. <laughs> uh, Captain's log, start date. Next. Uh, Nebula or whatever this is. Ah, but I like how already. Uh, ah, this is the shadow broker system. Let's go shadow broker base and see if there are any goodies there. Now that we're here, why not? Uh, maybe I can invest more money in risky ventures. So why not? Let's do that. Bureaucracy already. Mission report ready. Failure. They will lose and sweep up an advertising campaign to counter your broad press. Well, I would say that's not a failure in itself. We made them waste money on advertising. Uh, so, mission report. Failure. Several Karshan nations have acquired WMDs that tip the balance in their favor. Yeah, I have seen all three sets of videos, weapons, yeah. Success! Your Aether wants Magnoli Helix out the city on inspection a week before it happens. Great. Uh, rapidly growing cult called the Firewalls of the Exalted Light of the World is gaining foothold in Omega. Saint Angels to infiltrate the controversial religion and siphon off donations money for yourself. Why not? Uh, don't see any reason not to do that. A garden world Really? So, uh, what year is, uh, do you know what year it is in the Christian calendar or, or common era calendar? Uh, I always thought that was it, that CE is, is, uh, stood for common era, but it would make sense, it, make, it, it stands for council era. Uh, uh, well, the Garden World of Anahur went through a bloody political rebellion a few years ago, and a depressed economic climate has rekindled old grudges, set up a neutral ground for peace talks to prevent the colony from slipping back into civil war. Okay. Yeah, Virlam, yeah, that's uh, true. Although humans tend to be that way. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. How old is the Citadel? The, the Citadel Council? Uh, 
A spy? Sige, saka send element zero. Fuck you, a spy. Because, uh, let, let's check the codex quickly. Why not? Uh, let's go with Sita and Galactic Politics. The Citadel. Spectre. The Citadel let's, is an ancient uh, deep space station. No. There must be a chronology somewhere. Let's see. Maybe in the secondary codex. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I I agree. But I I find it very difficult to believe that the council has only 2000 years of existence. Uh, that's uh really what what I'm uh, trying to find out. Maybe here. Citadel Council. Uh no. The Human Systems Alliance began in 21. Fuck you. Uh, that's not what we want to see. Uh, maybe in humanity. 21. 67 No Timeline In the 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing What? 100? Yeah I'm guessing this is uh Okay, let's see what leisure is telling us. The Citadel Council is formed. The Asari and the Solarans organized the Citadel Council to establish the year is also known as Zero GS, the Galactic Standard. Yeah, that, that I, I would think that makes sense. And yes, the Virlomi and Asari were the first one. But 2186, I do believe, is the date, a regular date, the human date. Because look at this 2069. The 100th anniversary of the first lunar landing, which is in 1969. Uh, <coughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm sure that uh, you are correctly sure they have a, a, a their own nomenclature for years. Uh, Okay, let me check the uh, the 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 uh, link. Yeah, they must have because why? What reason? What possible reason could uh, could uh, the Asari or the Salarians uh, have to use the human? The human. Uh, system of, of no, numbering let me see look at this 500 BCE founding of the CETA Council which is the zero galactic standard uh, so you would have to add 500 years to whatever we have to get the galactic standard more or less uh, I, I think but I, I'm guessing that the dates are really regular dates 
uh, yeah look at this uh, if you scroll a lot it says uh, 9, 1969 CE July 20 Apollo uh, uh, let me copy it on the chat so you don't have to scroll yeah exactly exactly uh, that Uh, so there is a galactic standard uh, and it would be uh, something like that uh, I guess that would be the galactic standard date 2169 galactic standard an hour date is 1969 uh, yeah ah they already revealed this place the, the other shadow broker had made a mess out of this hole yeah okay glad we sorted out thanks muffin uh, that that's very interesting ah so that's how they call it the galactic standard date I start zero from the year of the the founding of the Citadel Council but do you know the Citadel Council is not that old I would have thought it was much much older 500 years uh, it's not that much before uh, the common era I mean so it it is a uh, it is actually a, a year or something between, at most a year between Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, it seems. Oh look on a Sky Harvest is a standard gun giant composed of hydrogen and helium. The spare fares from El Erin gather helium tree from here rather than Orun Mila. And its atmosphere is much more predictable as its atmosphere I guess. Uh, Haganju is a extremely large rock planet with a thin atmosphere of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Abundant in both copper and platinum, the crust has been scanned by mining bots from Erinle, but the specialized equipment to work on Haganju's heavy gravity more than 5 Gs has created prohibitive costs, so Haganju is largely un unexploited. Sorry about that. Erinle uh, is a garden world in the last stages of habitability, but its soil still supports agriculture, its animal biodiversity has fallen to record lows. The most successful remaining life is a toxic blue green algae, another algae controlled planet. <laughs> And an insect like pest species, a large solarian colony is trying to restore biodiversity to a planet. But setbacks are a fact of life. Mineral and fuel mining remains lucrative, however, and the Rindle has a thriving spaceport that refuels many ships passing into the terminal systems. Alright, on the last planet. Orun Mila, a medium-sized gas giant, Orun Mila is close enough to its foreign star to suffer massive changes in temperature dur during its day and night periods. This leads to a powerful convection currents and storms throughout its hydrogen-helium atmosphere, gathering helium-3 to refuel its possible 
for the hardiest exploration craft, but lesser ships are nearly always lost in the attempt. For Ludmilla, frost line of its solar system is within the frost line of its solar system, where icy colored gas giants do not usually form. For this reason, it is believed to be an extrasolar planet captured by the star's gravity. Okay, I think we're done here. Let's check. Yeah, our glass nebula. 100%. Let's go. I really hope those investments pay off because I waste money on the fuel to get to a shallow broker base. And if I lose the investment, I waste money on that as well. Omega Let's go to Omega Well, but that timeline is very interesting It's much more detailed than I uh, thought it would be Well, I haven't explored this place in its entirety. Let's go to Karabamori first. And Bataya, holy shit, there is a lot of things I have not explored here. Okay, let's go to Bataya first. No weapons. I'm planning on doing that as soon as uh, we finish exploring the, ga the galaxy. Lokashiri, a step of uh, Carbonius asteroid. Lokashiri is a planet with a carbon heavy crust and a space atmosphere of CO2 and helium. Its surface is cool enough to have liquid water, but it's rapidly dying out and it's lost the critical mass to have a self sustaining hydrologic cycle. Nevertheless, the Atarians have colonized the world, forcing the slaves to work in their mines and agri habitats. The labor is hot, endless, and backbreaking. But even in its low G environment, in every horror story told by a slave cellular in the cluster seems to be toppled by one Logasiri. By one from Logasiri. The most famous is that of a slaver Silparon, who worked to death 420 slaves over the course of a galactic standard year and ground up their bodies for compost in the grand <laughs> greenhouses. Well, that's very. <laughs> <sighs> uh, that's very strange. I'm guessing he does not believe in souls and was reusing resources in his opinion. Uh, recycling resources. He was eventually poisoned by his wife, but his shadow and his business model still hangs over the miserable planet. Uh, that's very funny. Tuna Wanuro, a strange island of peace in the lawless terminal systems. Tuna Wanuro is a planet of crushing gravity but abundant life. In this ponderous name indicates it was colonized by the Elcor, who have several booming industries in the planet. Hydrojectic dams and biofuels from tough woolly algae provide most of the planet's energy. Mines export uranium, thorium, and gold, taking to space with generous use of mass effect fields. Of course, pirates have targeted the Elcor shipping as soon as it leaves orbit, but the Elcor's deals with the mercenary companies keep away all but the most foolhardy of attackers. Uh, I think we're missing one more planet. There we go. The Pattaya system. They are a log. It's a hydrogen methane gas giant whose moons were once home to Esul, a Atarian warlord who terrorized the terminal systems. Attempting to unite a pirate army under his banner, he successfully conducted a rapid blist against 11 habitable planets. Fortunately for the rest of the galaxy, Esul's crimes caught the attention of the Spectres, who deduced his hidden location and assassinated him. 
A soul's empire built on a hyper-extended army soon came crashing down. His lost ex stockpiles of Element Zero have become something of a legend, and foolish spacers have spent countless amounts of time and money searching Bataya system, convinced that they will be the ones to finally strike it rich. Of course. Time to go. To a... Uh, a uh, Rilarkan. Yes, we made it. Only one planet, it appears. Utha, punished with UV and gamma radiation from the Class F star in orbit, Utha is no no one first choice for a planet to land on. Covered in seawater, Utah has a hydrosphere and a ozone layer similar to Earth's, but that simply isn't enough to ward off the life-killing radiation. Its nitrogen-rich, oxygen-poor atmosphere goes unchanged by the few proteins that have managed to form in the ocean depths. Utah, however, has served as a way station for slavers for slaves escaping the, their Batarian slavers. But little land, it has technically stable. Its considerable radiation belts and electrical storms grant cover for many common types of sensors. Plane ships typically hide on the other long enough to discharge their drive cores, stock up on the deuterium before trying to make it to the cluster's mass relay. Okay, ah, that's how it's called, a star cluster, a star system and a star cluster, okay. Uh, three planets here, let's go to a for this one first. Uwan Oche, Uwan Prime, is a stony planet encased in ice under a methane heavy sky name for Uthan Consortium, the Atarian manufacturing firm that financed its exploration. Uwan Oche crust provides much of the boron allotropes used in omni gel rod determinal systems. The area has naturally become a haven for pirates who attempt to steal the refined gel or its ingredients as soon as the cargo ships leave atmosphere. Okay. Sethor, a rocky planet with a crushing atmosphere. Sethor has been scanned from orbit but largely left unexplored to its sweltering shul conditions. Sweltering. Never have seen that word before in my life. Its atmosphere contains nitrogen, but it also unusually high percentage of ethane, which can coalesce in pockets near the surface. The alumina-heavy crust of the planet can reach glowing hot temperatures during the daytime, reaching the ethane auto-ignition temperature and creating pockets of flame across the landscape. Oh, that would be a sight. For this reason, extravehicular activities are discouraged on Selthor, and no company has been willing to invest in exploration. Ooh, last planet here, Bazaar. Uh, let me let me point it out. Thanks, Jason. Uh, this one. The uh, last word in the third sentence. Sweltering or... Ah. Thanks, Leisure. And Jason. Yeah, the sweltering. Uh, Bazaar, located within the life zone of a uh, really hot. <laughs> uh, well... I think shell sweltering has more uh, letters than really hot. So, what's the point of writing sweltering when you can just uh, say really hot? 
Ok. Bazaar. Located within the life zone of dimming orange sun, Bazaar would be idle except for its carbon dioxide atmosphere and icy surface that kills most oxygen producing bacteria. Nonetheless, mercenary companies and slavers have numerous strongholds on the planet. Out of reach of any galactic authority. Hasta este insignificant number of these threats signals have already generated the world within one million kilometer mark of Athar. Syrian troll is not advised. Time to go to Omega. Maybe I have enough money. I should. Uh, Only half our fuel remains. Yeah, I know. Now I have 30,000 or something. Shit. Yeah, I have. I don't have a lot of money. I'm pretty sure. Peace, poor, yeah. But this exploration costs a lot of money. Okay, Bidur. If it were closer to Sahbarik, Bidur would be would have an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and ethane. The deep cold of the outer solar system, however, both elements have long since frozen to the ground. Okay. Next planet. Imorkan. Standard methane ammonia gas giant Imorkan is the main source of helium-3 fuel for ships coming from or to Omega. Most of its fuel stations are run by criminal cartels who engage in cutthroat, sometimes literally pricing wars. Imorkan is also widely known for its layover stations where pirates in a hurry can find fuel, ammunition, intoxicants, gambling, sexual companionship at any hour. As long as the sexual companionship is not cutthroat as well, I'm guessing people uh, appreciate the price wars. Usually price wars uh, mean uh, that you reduce the price instead of uh, increasing it. Ordak is a close orbiting brown dwarf. Most red brown dwarfs binary systems have average separation of 8 AU. The Sabarik system is about 12 milli 12 billion years old, but it has long since used up the deuterium used to fuel the st station. Ah, all right. Okay, thanks, Jason. Uh, nah, uh, so there is a, a, another dimension to that word. Okay. <laughs> but, I, uh, but I guess uh, really hot real, uh, makes the point across just as well. Ortak is a uh, uh, yeah, oppressive hit or suffering hit or. The motherfucking heat that can peel your skin out of the bones, I would <laughs> maybe call it. Ortak is a class L brown dwarf with relatively low temperatures of 1300 degrees Celsius, but its heat and gravity have made it unpopular for development. There are rumors that the heads of several Omega crime syndicates maintain private residence on various moons, whatever the truth. Of the major battles between syndicate vessels are often observed around the ring plane. News outlets on Omega maintain satellites at Ordax Lagrange points for real time courage of these battles, <laughs> which garner high viewer ratings. I'm sure they would. <laughs> Just like, uh, yeah, real wars too. Uh, and a sporting event, betting on the... Uh, 
on the outcome of a battle. That would be interesting. Okay, this is a big one. 